This is a special episode created for International Podcast Month, September 2019, which I'm proud to be supporting. International Podcast Month has been created to celebrate podcasts and introduce audiences to a variety of shows and blog posts. You can find out more about this wonderful collaboration at internationalpodcastmonth.com. Please use the hashtag IPM2019 to comment on this and any other special IPM features this September. And check out International Podcast Month's Twitter feed at PodMonth. Welcome to the Casual Birder podcast. I'm Susie Buttress. As a casual birder, I try to find time to watch birds as I go about my daily tasks. Join me each week to hear about the wild birds I've seen, interviews with others, and stories from listeners around the world. Although I live in the UK and love seeing the birds that visit or live here, there's something very exciting about visiting other countries and seeing their local birds. I'm intrigued by the birds I would see as a casual birder if I lived there. I was recently in San Diego, California, at the start of a vacation that would take me on a voyage down the western edge of Baja, California, to see a variety of whale species. On the second day of our vacation in San Diego, while my husband went kayaking, I recorded a bird walk on the streets of La Jolla to find out for myself what birds the local residents would see. The side street where we had parked was fairly free from traffic and I could hear birds singing and calling as soon as I got out of the vehicle. From there, I could look up to the hills and walk to the ocean. I was excited to be in a location so different from where I live in southern England and I knew that while I might see some familiar birds, there was a good possibility of seeing something totally new. With that anticipation and under blue Californian skies, I set off for my walk. I'm in a residential street in La Jolla and um, I'm just going to have a wander around to see what kind of birds you'd see. It's really beautiful here, it's quite quiet. There are roads surrounding. I can look up to the hills from here and I'll take a walk down to the ocean. So I've just parked, or I'm just leaving the car now and the first birds that I can see are surprisingly a pair of collared doves. Now I thought at first they would be morning doves but they are absolutely collared doves, ones I'm very familiar with from back home. So that's a surprise. I didn't know that you could get collared doves here but I guess if they're introduced in the UK they can be introduced here too. There's also a European starling sitting on a palm tree on a palm frond. Um, I actually saw quite a few of them earlier. There was a flock of about 10 or 12. It's looking very glossy in the blue sky. A pair of American crows just flying over. Being silent <laughs> for a change. Must know I'm recording. I was trying to not look too obvious with my recording equipment but it's hot and I haven't got an overtop on so everything is on view recording equipment wise. There is a small orange tree just close to where I'm walking now and there's a hummingbird sitting in the top of it. Beautiful green emeraldy coloured plumage. The throat was looking dark to me so I couldn't see what type of bird it was. Unfortunately, the hummingbird is facing the wrong way. So I can see it's back, but I can't see it's, oh, it's just turned around. But the angle again is, I think it might be an uh, Anna's hummingbird. I'm expecting the throat feathers to be pink, but I can't see for sure. And we've got a large palm tree ahead of us, and I saw the starlings go into the areas where the cut fronds were. I think there's a mockingbird. I think I remember that 
song being a mockingbird. I'll see if I can find it. Oh, it was in the tree right next to me. I don't think that's a mockingbird, it's too small. Oh, no, it could be though. It is a mockingbird, it's right next to me. So you can hear the European starling and there's some um, house sparrows as well. So feeling right at home here. So the mockingbird is just on a hedge next to me. It's a beautiful, slender, blackbird sized bird. Blackbird as in the European blackbird. It's just flown off. The house sparrows are eating what looks like a sage or some some succulenty herby type thing. Okay, let's wander down here and see what else we can find. I wonder if these house sparrows have a Californian accent. So I think I might have just heard a song sparrow there. But I could be wrong. Really, it's very pretty to see so many palm trees. Okay, so I'm going to take a walk down towards the ocean. You can hear the European starlings calling out. Can you hear the collared doves calling out there? The three notes, the woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. So, just started walking down this street and there's a small sparrow sized bird. Oh, it's got a beautiful yellow. Ah, right, so I think this is a yellow rumped warbler. So it's got a little tiny yellow crest, yellow throat, yellow at the side patches, uh, sort of a buff brown above, and a beigey chest with mottled spots, dark legs, two white wing bars, or pale wing bars and I suspect if I can see it's got a yellow vent and I think if I'm lucky I'll see it has a yellow rump as well just flown up into the tree so I saw these yesterday in uh, San Diego Zoo and it's the first time I've seen them oh this is glorious I'm looking down a line of palm trees and I can see hummingbirds it's just heavenly you can hear the house sparrows calling and I think I can see a song sparrow in a tree or in the top of a bush. Yes, yeah, so there's a song sparrow currently preening. So the song sparrow has a very sparrow, house sparrow style. Oh, that's its calling. I'm just going to go a bit closer. I think it flew. Just saw some purple fronted birds or red fronted birds fly over. I think they might be house finch. And there's a hummingbird just flying up into the sky. Oh, it's landing on the side of a, oh my goodness. It's landed on the side of a palm tree and an absolute flash of cherry red or bright pink, neon pink almost is showing. That is stunning. Let me see if I can, my camera wasn't out, but it might do it again and display. That was a real surprise. It just landed on the side of a palm tree and the sunlight caught the, the neck feathers. So I think that's an Anna's hummingbird. That is stunning. You can hear it calling with sort of a zzz noise it's just clinging to the side of the palm tree and I guess it knows it's in the sunlight and it's just like a little pearl of bright pink shining out so it's really interesting to see the behaviors of the hummingbird like that it clearly knows it's in the full sunlight and it's just awesome that a surfer is just walking up the street in his wetsuit amazing this is so different from amazing stoke yeah, I'm convinced the hummingbird knows exactly what it's doing. 
It's beautiful seeing Bourgainvillea outside the buildings. So you can hear that house sparrow just behind me. So I think I'm heading down towards the ocean. I didn't actually check my map, but it was only a couple of blocks away. I'm now walking along the main road where there are kayak rentals, surf schools, everything beach related. It's a very pretty little area, this bit. I can see the sea. So I'm just gonna cross over and get onto the pavement. Although, just walking down alongside a park. Oh, if I'd realised, I probably could have walked through the park. I can see the real blue ocean ahead of me, which is quite exciting. A little bit of a breeze coming off the ocean now. So, now is the challenge to be able to identify the gulls. I'll have a little walk along this promenade and uh, see if we see any. Beautiful. A couple of white gulls just flew over and of course with the blue sky behind they look amazing. You can hear the sound of the surf beside me. It's just fantastic. So I just heard a turn then and I've looked around and there's a really large turn. So white body, grey wings, black tips, black head, orange beak. And I can also see a pelican flying over. Okay, camera back out. <laughs> the turn I saw was a Caspian turn. They are the largest turn in the world, a similar size to a herring gull or American crow. Their call, which drew my attention, is distinctive like a harsh chack and quite different to gull calls. And the pelican flying over was a brown pelican, a bird I was to become more familiar with during my vacation. While it was wonderful walking along the promenade beside the ocean, it was quite noisy and there were lots of people that made hearing any birds and recording them challenging. I did see several gulls which reminded me of herring gulls with pink feet and legs, yellow beaks with red spots near the end and white bodies and heads, but their wings were a much darker grey. Checking my ID app, I found that they were western gulls which are found along the Pacific coast. Looking back at the photos that I took that day, I also saw some herring gulls and they clearly have yellow eyes, mid-grey wings and pale pink legs and feet. The fact that herring gulls have yellow eyes is something I hadn't fully noticed before and will be one of those details that stay with me for when I next visit California I want to tell the difference between herring gulls and western gulls. I decided to move back inland and walk the surprisingly hilly streets. bit of a house sparrow fight going on next to me. Okay, so I'm going to head away from the ocean again now and go back through the residential streets, see what we can see there. So I'm going to get back onto one of the quieter side streets and then have a look up the hills to see whether I can see anything like a hawk or some other raptor. And I think I'm going to give in and put my sunglasses on. It's just a bit of a nuisance because I have to keep moving them every time I want to use the binoculars. Okay, so I'm looking up the hill and I can see a large hawk up oh, with a red tail. Let's guess what that might be. I think we'll say it's a red-tailed hawk. That's very similar to our buzzard, our common buzzard. The common buzzard doesn't have a red tail, but in size and I think in behaviour, the red-tailed hawk is similar to Butio Butio, which is our common buzzard. Yeah, it's a great day today for any raptors that might need the thermals, especially after yesterday, which was a really stormy day. Very windy, rainy, a bit miserable. Certainly not what we expected from San Diego. It's a beautiful garden here with lots of birds of paradise plants. Let's just going to have a look and see if there's anything here. American crow just flew over. I can hear something making a little tick noise. OK, 
Okay, there's a bush here with bees all around it. Oh, there's an actual hive in there. Okay, so I'll take a quick photograph and then move right on. I don't want to be anywhere near a beehive. And of course, as we get away from the ocean and the wind, it gets calmer. It's a beautiful house finch next to me, but I can't... And that was a song sparrow. Uh, but I couldn't take a photograph because it's right next to someone's window. And I probably look weird enough as it is. I've just come across someone's feeders. Scared a couple of morning doves away. So you might be able to hear one of those morning doves. It's up in the tree. Yeah, a little flock of finches with red heads and raspberry coloured breasts. I think these are house finch. I think there's some house sparrows up there as well. Right, I guess I better head back down. When it goes quiet from traffic and you just hear the birds, it's wonderful. Just saw another hummingbird. So a bird has just flown into an orange tree next to the road, as you do. Uh, that looks like a Californian toey. So an all brown bird, slightly russet around the face. And I think if it turns sideways on, yep, there's a red russety vent. So I'm very pleased to have been able to see those last year in Los Angeles. It's a bird I wouldn't have known what it was. And I can hear some more hummingbirds. Okay, so I'm almost back at the car. Oh my goodness, and there's a little hummingbird right next to me. Hello. He just landed on the side, if only I'd had my camera out. So now I'm back where I started. And there's the hummingbird in the orange tree. Still with its back to me, so I still can't see the colour of its neck, but let's turn around slightly. I think it's an Anna's hummingbird. Meanwhile, I've got Mockingbird calling out, and I think that possibly is a song sparrow. Let's see if I can get a bit closer. Ah, oh, yeah, I can just see it. And there's the mockingbird calling out. There's hummingbirds just everywhere. It's just wonderful. If I lived here, I would so have a feeder. I don't know if you can hear it. It's up in the tree. And it's right above me. <laughs> just like Tinkerbell, they just come across and fly and just stop in midair. Ah, now I think that one is the one that I saw yesterday. It's got a white vent and I think if the sunlight caught it, it would be more Rufus and coppery. So that's either the Allens or Rufus hummingbird. Right, better go and find my husband. Find out if he enjoyed the kayaking. Here's some additional information about northern mockingbirds, song sparrows and yellow rumped warblers featured on the walk. Northern mockingbirds are a similar size to an American robin or an aubergine or eggplant. The plumage is mid-grey above and paler grey below with noticeable white bars in the wings. They have yellow eyes and when flying a large white patch can be seen on each wing. The tail is long with regards to body length grey with white outer feathers, which show when flying. When perched, the tail is cocked and held at an angle. Their flight is quite buoyant, and I've seen them fly up from a perch to catch a fly and then return to the perch to sing again. They are found in Mexico and over much of the southern and eastern United States. 
The song of the northern mockingbird is varied and can be incessant, often singing throughout the night. The song consists of repeated phrases of notes. They're good mimics and will include elements of other bird calls in their song. The call note can be quite scratchy and harsh, and their diet consists of insects, fruit and earthworms. The song sparrow is one of the most widely found native sparrows in North America. Similar in size to the ubiquitous house sparrow, or maybe the size of a kiwi fruit, the song sparrow has streaked plumage, rich brown and grey on its upper parts, streaked brown breast merge into a buff or grey coloured underside, and the brown streaks on its breast become a central spot. It has a striped head with buff eyebrow and crown stripes, and strong malar stripe, a stripe that runs from the base of the beak down the neck towards the shoulder. The colouring and amount of streaking of the song sparrow can vary across its range. Of particular note is the relatively long and rounded tail compared with a house sparrow. Their song is a mix of phrases which end on a trill or buzz, and male song sparrows sing from exposed perches, so if you hear the song, it's worth scanning around to see if you can spot the bird. Alarm calls are a sharp note. They eat seeds and will come to garden feeders. I understand that there are two subspecies of the widely found yellow-rumped warbler, the myrtle form, which has a white throat, found in the eastern United States, and the Audubon's form, which has a yellow throat, found in the West, and the one that I saw in San Diego was the Audubon's form. A grey bird, slightly smaller than a house sparrow, perhaps the size of a large plum, with darker grey streaks on its flank and a pale underside, the most striking feature is the splashes of bright yellow on its crown, rump, sides and throat. As with many birds, their plumage is duller during the winter, but during the breeding season it's vibrant and strong. Their song is a mix of warbles and trills, and they make a sharp check communication call when flying or foraging. Yellow-rumped warblers eat seeds and suet at backyard feeders, but can also digest the waxes found in bayberries and wax myrtles, which allows them to stay further north during the winter than other warblers. You can find photos of the birds I saw on my San Diego bird walk on my Instagram or my Facebook page. Links are in the show notes. Back at home, my garden has felt quiet after the flurry of fledglings that were visiting my garden a month or so ago. However, this weekend has been sunny and dry, and the early morning has brought bullfinches, goldfinches, house sparrows, wood pigeons and collared doves to the garden. Along with my ever-present water dishes, I currently only have sunflower hearts out in the feeders, and I've stopped feeding suet during the hot weather. This has meant that the rooks and jackdaws have stopped visiting me for now, but hopefully they'll be back during the winter. The only corvid species to come to the garden at the moment is the magpie. We had three youngsters hanging out in the garden regularly a couple of weeks ago, getting into all sorts of mischief as they learned about their environment. For the past week or so, I've only seen one magpie at a time. I'd love to know what birds you've seen, so do tell me about them. Jo from Essex told me that there have been three young robins in her garden recently. Jo is a keen gardener and always out in the garden, so the robins have become accustomed to seeing her there. One of them has even become brave enough to approach her for food tidbits. European robins are well known for following gardeners around and taking advantage of the disturbed earth to find easy pickings of the insects and earthworms turned up. Dave from Indiana told me he started noticing the birds visiting his garden more. Recently he's seen morning doves, a bald eagle, ruby-throated hummingbirds, northern cardinals, Canada geese, American robins and a mallard duck. He also saw a scarlet tanager and said it was stunning the way the sunlight made its head look a metallic orange. That's a bird I'd love to see and I'm very envious. If you've enjoyed this episode, please share my social media posts about it with your friends. And if you talk about the show online, tag me in your post. It's great to see news about the show getting round and it helps it grow. Each Wednesday, I post a fun bird ID quiz on my social media channels, so do look out for that. Join our Facebook group to discuss this week's episode or post your photos of the birds you've seen. I really do enjoy hearing your tales, so come and join the conversation there. Find us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash casual birder podcast. 
Follow me on Twitter at Casual Birdapod or on Instagram at Casual Podcast. You can email me at casualbirdapod at gmail.com. And make sure you don't miss any episodes by subscribing to the show. Subscribing is free and you can do it wherever you listen. And don't forget, check out at Podmonth on Twitter and visit internationalpodcastmonth.com for more information about the blogs and podcasts being released for International Podcast Month, September 2019. Thank you to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeved Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. Check out their website at www.dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast. <laughs>